The Home Pros Radio Show. I'm Tommy Donovan with RIC Home Inspections, and this is the Home Pros Radio Show podcast. Recently, while under a home, I took a photo of some plumbing conditions that I felt would be excellent to discuss on our show. This photo, which was used for our RIC Home Inspections photo from the field, is included in the show description of this podcast. So check it out. Take a look and see how many issues you can observe in this one location. Shane and I brought in Scott Smith with All Clear Plumbing to discuss the issues identified in this photo, and this prompted a detailed discussion about the design of your home's plumbing supply system. Let's join the home pros now to learn more. Have you seen the photo from the field? What are you looking at? I know what I'm doing. Did you see that? This is coming from RIC Home Inspections. The issue, at least, that I was trying to single out here is related to the plumbing supply. Tell me, aside from that specific issue, what else do you see under there? I'm not sure what that uh, coupling. I don't know if that's a CPVC coupling on a PVC pipe. Ooh, very nice. It appears to be. Let's just go ahead and get right to it as we bring in Scott Smith with All Clear Plumbing. Thank you for having me this morning. I'm an itching to get a plumber in here because when we're 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 working in the field every day, and because we're not that licensed plumber, mm-hmm. folks will go, "No, uh that's not how I, you know." And so I'd do it a different way. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> you, you get this. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, yeah, it is. tell no, me it about isn't. it. Yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> so what are we looking at here? Uh, we got all kinds of things going on. Tell us your thoughts, there, Scott. Um, well, you you have. Um, PV, it looks like PVC supply under the house. So you've got two dissimilar glues. You've got uh, CPVC glue, which is the gold glue. And then you have a rain and shine wet that is the, the blue. Mm-hmm. So in there, and then I don't see any purple primer um, just off. And then you have that beautiful uh, washing machine hose hooked to something. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've been looking for. Yeah, it does. It looks like a rubber hose. Yes, Just and right uh, up to a supply line. I've seen that under a house. We've been to a job, and the lady has paid someone to come under, uh, go under her house, and replace her lines, and they replaced it with a uh, garden hose with worm gear clamps. Really? Uh, yes. <laughs> it was a sad situation. Yes, yeah. I would say that that homeowner got hosed. Yes. <laughs> Come on, work with me here. Come on, Come on. let's go. Let's go. No, I'm, I'm here with all you. Week. I'm with you. All right. So, but yeah, it's exactly what it is. Is uh, I mean, and and then I guess that's what gets. Um, why is it a bad idea? Just to well, I mean, get to the you know everybody it. spouts all oh, it's to code. Well, those are the minimum codes are our minimum standards. Mm-hmm. Um, there are baselines to go with. So the code book it says with PVC. You're supposed to, you can use it on from the meter to the house and go five feet under a house Mm -hmm. and then hook it up because when you have a closed loop system, you're heating water and that hot water can back down into your supply and the glue will fail and the pipe will fail Mm -hmm. because it's not made for hot water. And when you're referring to a closed loop system, what we're talking about is, you know, that's that's a that's a home's plumbing system. You got water coming in and then it's going out and it's closed. It's not attached to any other system. Right. It's because there's a, a check valve at the meter mm-hmm. that closes your loop in your home and that's that's why water heaters have T and P valves, temperature and pressure valves. We put expansion tanks. We you know, we have these Things, these components of the the whole system that work together. They're, they're designed to basically protect the infrastructure of all the piping and everything like Correct. that. Correct. So, like for example, you're bringing up PVC. It, it's not mechanically designed to handle that type of insulation. Right. And and it may be in there 20, 30 years, and you never have a problem. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's not the correct thing to do. Mm-hmm. And if I was well, buying a home, I would that would be a big red flag mm-hmm. that there yeah. was some work that wasn't done to the standards that we have all set. Mm-hmm. The thing that we get a lot too, Shane, is from from folks as well. It it's not leaking. Well, I haven't. I've never had a problem. It works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. So yeah, um, but it doesn't mean that it 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 can't develop an issue. That is correct. And, and that's the thing that we're trying to avoid is to make sure that you're not hit with those surprises of sudden burst pipes and 
and things like that. So, um, um, just to kind of help folks out there as well with the different types, we, we're, we, you're going to hear us talk about different types of plumbing supply lines. PVC is just that white, typical pl- white plastic pipe you see with, you see on sprinkler lines, you see, and, and, and I think that's where folks get confused because PVC, if you look at the labeling on it, it'll say for drinking water. Right. So that's people correct. assume that, oh, well, I can use this for my interior plumbing supply. No, it just means that you can use it for a water fountain or something if you need right. it. Right. You can use it outside. I mean, that's just like galvanized pipe. That, I mean, some houses are still plumbed with it. Mm-hmm. But we're not, you know, if you are a plumber or you're, you're somewhat learned, you go in there, you're not allowed to use it in the, in homes anymore. Mm-hmm. And you're only allowed to use it above ground. You can't put it in the ground. And I mean, that was a common practice back when our fathers were doing that. And mm-hmm. it's in a lot of houses, but it's not what's proper today. It's likely if you have a home that was built, uh, I would say before 1960s, right? You're probably going to, chances are you might have some galvanized pipe and, and galvanized folks is the, is the, it's this is a silver looking pipe. It's threaded on one end. You can actually find it in the big box stores all right next to the iron pipe, but we just don't use it for plumbing supply. Mm-hmm. Why anymore? Because it just, because of the, it rusts on the inside and it gets a smaller diameter and Cause you get build up in it, and right? you get build up and it, that scale breaks off and go in there. The most common things I see is people will take black iron. They'll go to their home store and say, oh, well, I need a fitting to fix this. And they'll grab black iron, which is just raw steel. Mm-hmm. And they'll put that as a command. We see it on and that's all what- water heaters all the time. They'll put that on there and that will just makes it really rust mm-hmm. within five, six years. And black iron is, it looks like galvanized, but it's black. But that's what we commonly use for gas. That's correct. So, I mean, I guess the other convenience in all of this is you can go under a house. And even if you're a lay person and don't do what we do every day, you should be able to tell what everything is based on the materials. That's correct. That's one of the things that's nice. But there's also a reason why we're using different materials for different applications. And just because it was used in the very beginning, I mean, Pete, things are realized about different materials as the days go on. And that's how the new codes come into effect. (laughs) So just because it worked you know, when the house was built in the 1800s doesn't mean that product right. is still going to well, uh, get by. You know, I mean, you need more modern techniques. Now. That's why I always like to say home construction over the years has been a series of trial and error. We do something for certain ways and go, uh, you know what, we can, we can make this better. It really or has. It doesn't work. Or right. a very prominent situation would be polybutylene piping, That's which correct. is a grayish looking plastic pipe that is no longer allowed in residential settings um, that had an issue with deterioration from the inside out, correct? The, yeah, it would get it would dry out and split, um, especially where it was crimped. And a lot of the crimped, uh, the, the pieces of the metal fittings. that they, the fittings that they used were made out of tin. Mm-hmm. So they would just get brittle and, and go away. And then, the you know, a lot of manufactured houses are still... There's a, still a lot of it out there, and we mm-hmm. go in there when they have a pressure issue. They'll have that pressure issue, and then they'll the, it will, will go. Well, those those original crimp rings. What was happening was is they were so malleable that that pressure in the piping would cause them to come loose, and then they would someone would go on vacation and they would come back to a flood because the pipes would just psh, could yeah. become. And and when we're talking about these this piping, it's it's interesting. It's not like the PVC that we see in the CPVC that we see in the photo here, but um, uh, the way that that piping is 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 assembled is you have T's, you have um, you have different you have elbows and T's that you actually slide the they're, they're metal. Um, usually, uh, a lot of times they were copper. Uh, and then you slide the pipe on them, and then you crimp the pipe onto those fittings. Right, and that's the same way like PEX is used today. Mm-hmm. And usually the fitting wasn't the issue; it was the pipe that would fail before the fitting would fail, mm-hmm. and or it would be the 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 thing that they would crimp it with. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be the pressure rating on the pipe, mm-hmm. um, and that just was one of those things that. They learned over time. I know it can sound confusing. PEX, 
galvanized. We we're talking PVC. We've mentioned CPVC, the, all the alphabets of plumbing. And uh, we've been talking about this photo. If you haven't seen it yet, it is a photo that we found underneath a home that has all kinds of things going on with it. And what I wanted to point out before we go on to other things about this is, of course, we have the rubber hose issue, right? And uh, that's not code. No. That's not acceptable building practice, no. as we like to say. Well, as a home inspector, I'm used to saying code with air quotation marks <laughs> yeah. because we don't necessarily, as residential home inspectors, don't quote code. But we have to go by some standard. Um, so that's something that we obviously pointed out that isn't, uh, you know, isn't desirable. But we also have – I love the um, – the the fact that you pointed out the different glues because I mean there are it, we've been talking about different types of plumbing lines and and, and we don't want to be mixing different types of materials either with one of the things that we deal with when connecting different metals they can corrode and you have to have a a specific a dialectic fixture. union mm-hmm. uh, in order to join the two so we don't get those types of issues but uh, you know a lot of times folks think the plastic piping and like CPVC, PVC, and the glue being used to hold them together is interchangeable, but it's not. It's not, and and they do make some uh, quote unquote universal glues. All you know, it's all purpose, mm-hmm. but it's just because you can get it at the store doesn't mean right. it's desirable. It's, it's it's not, and you know, it's a a fusion weld mm-hmm. when you put um, primer on there, softens the pipe. And then cleans the pipe, and then you're putting the glue on, and that's fusing the pipe together. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there are steps that you need to do. And, you know, pe- some people think, well, I'll use a rain and shine glue. I can put it in water and get a, you know, stick it together. And, you know, we get these call, emergency calls on Sunday afternoon. You know, I've glued this thing 10 times, and we go out there, and it's like, well, You've got CPVC and you're using PVC glue and it's not going to hold. One of the neat things about it, about all these materials is they're color coded. So you can actually look at this piping that we have in this photo and tell what was used. And we, we have different piping used in different locations. Uh, we've got CPVC connected to PVC and which we don't want. And, uh, now tell us about CPVC. How's that different than PVC? CPVC is used for hot and cold. It'll take the heat. It's heat rated where PVC is not on the supply side. You, you know, the only pipes that are rated for heat is copper and CPVC and PEX. Okay. So you got PVC, which is polyvinyl chloride and then CPVC Mm -hmm. is that's chlorinated uh, polyvinyl chloride. Some about chlorinating the process makes it and they'll hate. Um, yeah, <laughs> which is interesting. I'd love to get into the science of it all, uh, but that's too technical for, for here. But, you know, a lot of times we'll see PVC and CPVC being used and interchanged, especially when you see, I see do-it-yourself jobs. Right. And PVC is a larger diameter than CPVC. Right. And usually on PVC, the inside diameter is the three-quarter, a half inch, and on on. CPVC, it's going to be the outside diameter. Mm-hmm. It's going to be your your um, you know half inch or mm-hmm. three quarters. Right, because CPVC could, it, it handles more temperature. Right. But does does PVC handle more pressure, or are they the same on no, pressure? No, they're, the, they're same, the same. They're the same. same. Okay, yes. I, I just didn't know if it if there was anything would be your best benefit for pressure. Okay, okay. What and uh, one other thing, you know, you mentioned the different diameters because I have seen, you know, people try to use say a. PVC coupling on CPVC pipe, next thing you know, they just think, let me put more glue on it because they don't actually fit. And we go back to the, well, it works. I got it to work, you know, because they put more glue on it to try to build up the diet outside diameter of the CPVC so they can use a PVC coupling. So that's another thing where that's you correct. get into mixing materials that aren't designed to be used together. There's going to be other problems than the ones we've already covered, like just basic. It doesn't fit. And you can't make something fit that doesn't fit. That's correct. And they do make transition mm-hmm. fittings for that. You just have to use them in the proper context. Correct. Well, that's the thing is, is it's not like one is that much more expensive than the other or harder to find. 
No. It's so, just, I would probably say most of these cases are just from people who don't know any different. They just. That's correct. Somebody it's, handed them pipe. You need what? Oh, take this. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Here, we got this. We don't have that. Well, in that case, it was probably uh, running that rubber hose up in the wall was probably the easiest thing for that they, homeowner they or whoever. They had it in the truck. Yeah. <laughs> They had it in the truck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, it was just easy for them to run that, that pipe up to the uh, shower head. What's bad is way. someone went and got that fitting, that threaded fitting, to be able to put that rubber hose on there instead That's, of just getting yeah. what well, they should have gotten to do it correctly. Yeah. Absolutely. So somebody actually went through the trouble to put a fitting on there so they could put <laughs> a rubber hose on there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So Because it had to be threaded. But we got a phone call. I think, yeah, you know, we do have a phone call. Good morning, home pros. Hey there, home pros. It's Jack Leggett. You know uh, Jack, them home repairs. Good morning, Jack. Haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah, I gotta say, I ain't seen nothing wrong with using them hose pipes, especially for you a don't... shower. I mean, think about it. You run okay. that hose pipe up there, you have all kinds of plumbing fixtures you can install in no time. <laughs> really? You just screw them off. <laughs> Oh, okay. Why go to them supply stores when you can hit the garden section of the dollar store or Walmarts? Oh, Walmarts? <laughs> you can hook up one of them island sprays from Orthos, and you can apply your body wash and rinse all in one shot. I mean, there's nothing like being able to use a spray wand to get some of them hard-to-reach places by yourself. Ain't that right, Roscoe? Oh. And you got Roscoe all, with them. If you hit Toys R Us before they go bankrupt, you might be able to get yourself a water wiggle. Or a fun fountain for next to nothing. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Ask your plumbing guy if you ever hooked up a slip and slide. I'm not a blush for shower, or bathing for that matter, but I bet that'll make shower time the best time of the day for anyone. No. I'll take the answer off the air. Oh, thanks. All right, I appreciate it, Jack. No, you just... Guys, there, there's a perfect example of you, 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 you have these great ideas and the way things could work or should work, and they're not. there's reasons why we don't have them doing that for <laughs> right. your plumbing work. Stay away from Jack. Well, you're talking about diameter. What, what's the diameter pipe that we normally see coming into a house? Water it, the, the minimum size that is supposed to be coming into a house by the minimum code is three-quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it d- depends on the size of the house might determine, you know, where you could go up because, you know, it's all about friction. It's called a thing called friction loss. It's about water coming through the pipe and it slows down at every 90 and everything. And that's how you, if you had the opportunity to open a code book, it would tell you it's three quarter, half inch, three eighths or the sizes for like a house. And the three eighths would be after a stop, mm-hmm. you know, a, a shutoff stop. That mm-hmm. three eighths would go to that fixture like a toilet. Mm-hmm. It's usually um, half inch coming out of the wall, and then it would be the supply line would be that three eighths going to the to that whatever fixture it was, a faucet or that. So we reduce as we go. That helps with pressure. When did we start going to three quarter inch? Because it was commonplace to have half inch coming into homes. That was in the seventies, pre sixties, into the fifties. You you run into a lot of houses that even have a half inch from the water supply. It was half inch. That's when you would uh, flush the toilet and you had the kitchen sink running, and then the water would like slow down to a trickle. Mm-hmm. You know that causes that um, issue. <laughs> Definitely would love to talk about that some more too. Well, that was a lot we covered there. Coming up in part two of our discussion with Scott Smith, we'll talk about some of the devices we use in order to keep our plumbing supply system healthy, including pressure regulators, expansion tanks, and water hammer arresters. You won't want to miss it. In the meantime, if you have plumbing repairs that need to be addressed in your home, don't miss the opportunity to have all clear plumbing out. Call 864-979-7059 so Scott Smith and his crew can get the job done. You can also find them on Online at allclearplumbingupstate.com. Part two of our discussion about your home's plumbing supply is coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe to the Home Pros Radio Show podcast. Be sure you are notified once it's available. Also, please take a moment to leave us a review so we can hear your opinion on how we're doing. I'm Tommy Donovan with RIC Home Inspections. I'll look forward to you joining Shane Hips and I again next time on the Home Pros Radio Show. Thanks for listening to the Home Pros Radio Show. Meet more Home Pros at homeprosradio.com. There, you can also catch full episodes of our show, along with additional information to ensure that your home is in perfect shape. It's the Home Pros Radio Show, brought to you by Prime Lending. Home loans made simple. The Home Pros Radio Show, online at homeprosradio.com. 
or on the radio at 94.5 WGTK, The Answer.